In the final days of 1.0, an unsettling atmosphere spread across the Black Shroud. From the fur line in the north to the lumber line in the south, all of the Twelve's wood went silent, awaiting its inevitable fate. In the midst of the ensuing chaos that would soon follow, Gridania would keep her gates open for those who sought refuge from Bahamut's rage. In part 1 of this 1.0 exploration of Gridania, we focused on the area we today know as New Gridania, an area that saw little to no change from 1.0 to A Realm Reborn. As we move to what we today call Old Gridania, however, things get a little different. Before we even get to the Old Gridania section, we have to mention the three original entry points, Poplar Avenue, the Black Tea Brook Tunnel, and Holly Avenue. Now let's start to the west and Holly Avenue. This relatively long passage contained the city's Etherite Plaza, as well as the entrance area to the Lotus Gardens, Market Wards, and Adder's Nests, which was added in the Grand Company patch. To the east, we'd have Poplar Avenue, which didn't really contain anything of note, it was just an empty tunnel. In the middle, leading out from the knot, you'd find Black Tea Brook Tunnel, which isn't its official name as it remained unnamed on the map. The tunnel contained a small river, the one that fills the small pond in the knot, as well as a small vendor area. In A Realm Reborn, these tunnels were cut entirely, as the zone dividers removed the need to hide the loading in of assets between districts. Now I say districts, but in 1.0 Gridania had none. In fact, I don't even know if these are supposed to act like loading tunnels. It seems the dev team was faced with a challenge when dividing Gridania for A Realm Reborn due to her original layout. It's just too spread out, and there are no clear divides between districts, because, again, <laughs> there was none. However, the area connected by the three tunnels seemed to have been the best bet, as dividing it further up could be awkward, asymmetrical, or otherwise difficult to do. This led to New Gridania appearing as a bit small compared to the other city-state's first districts. Passing into the upper area of Gridania, now called Old Gridania from the middle, we are almost immediately greeted by Atelier Fen... Fen... Yil? Fen... Il? <laughs> the Leatherworkers Guild. The building appears more or less the same today, even containing the same people. But the surrounding area has seen some changes. Fen Il Fineries, which used to neighbor a random building, received a bit of a facelift with more decorations. The inside actually looks almost identical to how it appeared in 1.0, down to the chest pieces, hats, shoes, and handbags. You're probably noticing that the sign above the counter in 1.0 differs from the more generic Leatherworkers Guild sign in A Realm Reborn. Let me explain to you how signs worked in 1.0, or how they didn't. Or rather, they, they worked as intended, but they ended up being more confusing than helpful. 1.0's design philosophy was a realistic living world, which meant making unique signage for the different stores and stalls around Eorzea. Much like how we do things in the real world, however, the signs would sometimes be so vague and sometimes wouldn't even correlate to what they represented that you'd have to memorize what icon sold what. Now here's an example of a sign that worked quite well. This is the sign for the centaur's eye. They sell bows and arrows. They're located next to the Lancers Guild and sell pole arms as well, but that's besides the point. You kind of get an idea what they sell here. Now here's the icon for Thundersquall, Thundersticks and Limsa Laminsa. Can you guess what they're selling? Camping equipment? Lamps? Nope, they sell weapons. The signs were most likely made this way to help you remember where they were. Now each store having a unique sign acting as identifiers which was supposed to be a godsend in a world that's mostly copy-paste. In A Realm Reborn, these shop icons were removed from the map entirely, and the existing signs were replaced with associated guilds. Moving eastward, we make our way to the shopping district of Gridania, the Shaded Bower, with its ebony and rosewood stalls. Right off the bat, you'll see that the Retainer Vocate did not exist in this area. Retainers could only be acquired from the city-state's respective adventurers guild, so in 1.0 you'd have this seating area instead. 
no market boards either, as player sales were conducted within the market wards. It did contain a lone summoning bell near the entrance though, so... Yeah, there's that. The stalls were mostly used by crafters to get basic crafting items without having to go out and gather them. Some stalls, just like today, offered gear and weapons, useful at lower levels. It's important to remember that 1.0 was a mostly lootless game, where players would either craft or purchase gear themselves. When 1.0 ended and A Realm Reborn began, the devs were struggling to fill the large shopping districts, as the game had more or less gone away from the crafting and purchase only style of obtaining gear. Some of the stalls in Aorcea's shopping districts therefore stood empty at launch, and others had their stock changed completely. Moving further up north, we arrive at the previously mentioned Lancer's Guild. The Lancers and Archers Guild both used the same building models, and this was screamingly obvious in 1.0. In A Realm Reborn, however, the building is dressed up with flags and banners as well as this big mask. The mask didn't hang outside in 1.0, but it did hang inside the guild just like it does in A Realm Reborn. Other than that, the Lancers Guild looks more or less the same today. The Centaur's Eye, which we briefly mentioned earlier in the episode, would provide adventurers with bows, arrows, and pole arms in 1.0. It has received a facelift similar to Fenil's Fineries, but with a new sign and more decorations. But it's become even more confusing now, because, you know, it still looks like it specializes in bows and arrows. It looks exactly like it did in 1.0, but it sells all kinds of weapons now. In fact, it now sells two Conjurer's Canes and only one bow. To the north of the Lancers Guild, you'd encounter one of Gridania's two mysteries, the Black Boar Gate. This gate was closed to all adventurers at launch and remained that way until the game shut down. No lore is tied to the gate and it remained unacknowledged by all characters in the game and the gate remains in the game to this day. Now with an NPC telling adventurers that the gate is to remain locked, telling you to use the ferry docks if you wish to travel. In 1.0, the path past the gate continued for a very long time, almost as if it was meant to lead somewhere. It wasn't just a short dead end. Three theories exist about the nature of the gate. It could have been meant to lead to the North Shroud. Gridania already had a connection to the Central Shroud, and North Shroud would make sense to attach this far up north. But if you look at the 1.0 map of the Black Shroud, you'll see that North Shroud is mostly to the northwest, with the northern portion of the map being completely empty. If Gridania was modeled before it was placed into the main map, the designers might have been under the impression that Gridania would be located closer to the center, with the North Shroud above it. And when it was implemented, it just didn't fit, and the gate was closed and never mentioned again. The second theory is that the gate would lead to Girabania. In vanilla 1.0, that is, Tanicus Launch 1.0, Girabania remained a mysterious part of the realm. Alamigo is never mentioned, perhaps the original story didn't even include the Autumn War and the Imperial Invasion of Alamigo, and a future expansion or patch would introduce Girabania with an entry point being the Black Boar Gate. If that's the case, the permanent closure of the gate makes sense, as the story would later introduce the Autumn War and the invasion of Alamigo. You wouldn't want to have a gate leading straight to a Garlean province unlocked. The third theory is tied to our next location and the second mystery of Gridania. Lily Hills. This area was located in the northern part of Gridania and never opened in 1.0. In A Realm Reborn, it still exists, but the name has been scrubbed from the map and a closed gate has been placed in front of it. It was most likely meant to be the game's housing system, as houses could be seen lined up along the road ahead. In A Realm Reborn, the gate guard tells you that it's the housing district for the most distinguished Gridanians, which seems to confirm this further. Another confirmation actually came by mistake in recent times, when the red arrows were added to A Realm Reborn's maps. In an example of how the arrows would work, Square Enix released a screenshot that showed Lilla Hills with a red arrow on it, indicating that the gate had been opened, leading to a new zone. The screenshot was quickly pulled, with the explanation that it contained features that had yet to come. A new screenshot was then posted, with the arrow removed. A short time later, the apartment system was introduced, in the Lavender Beds. Its name? Lily Hills. It seems they abandoned the idea of having the apartment district inside the city-state. If the housing system was introduced in 1.0, the Black Boar Gate could have been meant to act as a secondary entrance for the housing district. It is angled in such a way for that to make sense, but 
I'm leaning more towards the second Girabanian theory myself. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now next we're moving to an area that's mostly the same today, but in the last days of 1.0 it played a pivotal role in the game's story. This was the place you'd find none other than Louisois Levelieu. The Archon from Charlien would be standing here until the Battle of Cartineau. His last words to the adventurers being, All things happen for a reason, yet it is the responsibility of the individual to find meaning in that which comes to pass. Behold with the clarity of a still pond, hearken with the tranquility of a virgin grove, take with these words to heart, and no truth shall ever elude you. Now the western portion of Old Gridania is the most retconned and damaged part of the city-state, and this is where the 1.0 and a Realm Reborn maps differ the most. In 1.0, the map continues in a narrow tunnel to the west until you reach Miketo's amphitheater to the north. A large amphitheater with a small lake, flowers and trees as its backdrop. There's even a small house near the entrance. In the Calamity, the passage leading to the original amphitheater collapsed, making it impossible to reach it. The passage can still be found today, but it's blocked by large boulders. The amphitheater was reconstructed in this area, which was mostly rock in 1.0. The biggest retcon in Gridania is located here. The 1.0 Conjurer's Guild, aka Stillglade Fane, was located to the farthest north and was only accessible through this long tunnel. The tunnel itself was actually quite uniquely decorated for 1.0, the entrance having this stone gate and these three bridges crossing a small river, eventually ending up at the entrance of Stillglade Fane. A vast, open area with Nauficus stone placed in a giant tree stump. But you'd still only be halfway there at this point. The actual interiors is still one of my favorite Gridanian designs to date and remains more or less the same today. Its location, however, has been moved to where the Etherite Plaza used to be in 1.0. A complete retcon, but a good one, in my opinion, even if I prefer the more open version from 1.0. Quite interestingly, the original tunnel can still be found in Old Gridania, but it's been blocked by boulders. You can even see the original stone gate collapsed and covered in moss. Ruins of a retcon? My new series. Please look forward to it. Last on our tour is the Great Loam Growery. In 1.0 it appeared much smaller as only the top portion was accessible, the lower area being used in cutscenes and special instances. In A Realm Reborn, of course, the whole area is fully accessible to the player. In the first part of this episode I mentioned the Ethernet shards being added to the game at a later point. In patch 1.21, released on March 3rd, 2012, more than a year after release. It was called the Ethereal Transport Network, constructed by the grand companies of Eorcia to make travel within city-states quicker and more convenient. But because this is 1.0, accessing them wouldn't be that easy. To use the network, you had to purchase an Ether Pass from your grand company headquarters after reaching the rank Private First Class or higher. Only then would the transport network become available. The 1.0 Ethernet was also not connected to the main Etherites, so as you can see, the Etherite Plazas had their own Ethernet shards placed nearby. In the previous part, we also listened to the City State's theme. In this part, I wanted to wrap everything up nicely with a track that was first ever played in Guidania's opening cutscene in 1.0, called Tranquility. The Black Shroud would see massive destruction in the Calamity. During the actual End of Days event, Gridania remained a safe haven while chaos erupted all over the realm. Dalamud threatened all existence, but Gridania survived, scarred, but stronger than ever. May Wood's will be done. 
Thank you for watching this episode of Remnants of a Realm. If you enjoyed this look at 1.0 Gridania, please leave a like and subscribe for more. In the next episode, we'll be heading west to the maritime city-state of Limsa Until then, may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.